what's best to do when if you find you are not in agreement with this fellowship? After the passage of time, perhaps something's gone wrong. From your point of view, you're not now the same harmony of values. How are you to withdraw? I mean, just leave. You're no longer part of the fellowship. What about the assets, literally, um, finance and assets that you may have given into this fellowship? They're not traceable now because time has moved on and it's been a joint um, joint venture of the family, isn't it? So you could argue that it's best if the um, fellowship make it clear when they take on a new member what the financial assets are of that new member and what proportion that now represents to the new asset total base of the family of the fellowship so if it um, increases an existing asset value, but if you like, current prices. I'm an economist, you see. Um, say the asset value of the community is at the minute 10 million, and you bring a million in. It's now total asset value at current prices of 11 million. And uh, you're entitled to one eleventh of the total asset value. So you might want a legal, worldly contract specifying this, so that if you do leave, um, the fellowship has to find the one eleventh um, of the asset value to give you. If another person should join the fellowship, bring in, let's say, a, an extra three million, then the asset value is now 14 million. They have a right to three fourteenths of the value. You have a right to one eleventh of eleven fourteenths of the value. Do you see? Now on the leaving of a member then, um, they will want their share and um, you have to come up with the funds to do that. And this may be achieved by this cash in the bank, <laughs> taking the funds from the bank, or if there isn't, you may want each member to give in a certain larger share so that you can pay off the um, leaving member. And according to who is able to come up with what, their shares change accordingly as well. So it could be quite a lot of little calculations, but very straightforward. Of course, there may be some disagreement over what um, the current market value is of property. So you'd have to specify how you arrive at such an independent valuer, whatever criteria you're going to specify that that is. Hmm. Or of course you can 
simply say, well, it's a risk situation. Yeah, we have everything in common. And if you do fall out with the fellowship in the future and leave, well, I'm afraid you've lost it. <laughs> but there's no need. You could have a contract like the one specified here if you wish. Hmm. Let's think about that. Thank you, Dad. Well, you may have a different approach. Instead of all things in common, which after all was not something that Jesus required. I mean, he was wandering around with his band and they gave as and when they did. You may want to, like an Ananda, basically keep your assets. They all live in their own owned houses, but they're a fellowship. Then nonetheless, each time their fellowship has a need, they contribute into according to what they feel led to contribute. So if they want to build a temple, well, they raise funds to build a temple. Ask the fellowship uh, who can give what and what sort of temple can we therefore reasonably afford. And what's given is given. If you leave, well, you don't get a share of it back at all. It's no problem. And you still own the assets that you held on to. But of course, this may starve the community of um, financial assets. But in a sense now, of course, the community doesn't need enormous financial assets. Only what they're committing to building for the community. In other words, the community itself doesn't have to be a, an asset-holding entity at all. Um, or rather, I should say, it's holding the assets that are held as owned by the community. And the community never dies, so mm, it's got the assets. The point is that the community that you belong to may become dysfunctional, may um, become chaotic, may reject you, or you may have to reject it because um, it's no longer right for you to stay there. Perhaps you know, it's at variance with some fundamental value that you have and is causing great inharmony between you. Or perhaps you've been wrongly accused of something. You know it's not valid and uh, it's causing division, discord. We live in a world of uncertainty. You, you don't know what the future may hold in this regard. And this should affect your decision making in all circumstances. You know, it's a fact of life, like um, breathing and having to eat, at least for most people. <laughs> and it's best to recognize this and uh, make your decisions accordingly, with some eye to the possibilities of what situations you may have to cope with. I don't mean worry about such, our trust is in God. But our trust is not in God to the extent that we don't do we think is best to do. It's just that what we think is best to do is um, with respect to our understanding of God. It's not the case
notice that everybody changes fellowships. Some are born into a church and they stay there all their life because their parents were there and they agreed with it. Well, at least they agreed to stay. It may not have been the best decision or the right decision. It might have been better had they have chosen to leave and find a situation, a lifestyle that is better, possibly with a another fellowship, but not necessarily. You may find that fellowships actually cut across your relationship with God as you understand God to be, and that you are more fulfilled, more on track, not belonging to a fellowship. More people than not that claim to be Christian actually do not belong to a fellowship. And uh, I don't know if that's so with other religions. Um, in other words, the majority of people do leave a fellowship at some time or another for whatever reason. And so you should take this into account that this is a distinct possibility for you. And this will change the degree to which you're committed to the fellowship. You see, we're committed to God, not a fellowship. Which is why we don't make vows. Well, apart from the obvious that in, in the Jesus teaching uh, we're told not to. That your yes be yes and your no no. For more than this cometh of evil. We're cautious therefore of what we agree to, what we sign. We try not to lock ourselves in a way that will cut across our freedom to follow God. And whether you make a vow or not, it is very much like marriage. You can stay to the bitter end, but the end might be bitter. And that may not be right between you and God. So, you live in life accordingly. We are trusting in God, not the membership of some fellowship or organization. Try to avoid open-ended commitments. You know, the worst um, one in the financial world is the mortgage where you commit to um, borrowing money at an unknown future rate, <laughs> depending on what the market rate is. Now this is a horrendous agreement to enter into. I mean, you, you could be sailing along happily at 4%, and then because of world crisis and so on, you're up to 25% and ruined, and you've lost all your equity in a mortgagee sale that hit the market in circumstances that are disastrous for you. And you come out in debt with no home. There are some agreements you should avoid and commitments that don't define, or rather don't confine the degree to which and to what you are actually committed to are to be avoided. I mean, there may be circumstances where you can't, but you see what I mean. 